A Murmuration of Starlings After a visit to the Wordsworths in the Lake District, Coleridge caught a glimpse from his stagecoach of a gigantic flock of birds as it swooped, rose, then fell, above the frozen wintry fields of a passing farm. It was November 1799, and he described the phenomenon as a vision in his journal, then detailed the way this vast flight drove along like smoke, and expanded, then condensed, then continually shifted shape. First he saw the starlings as an arc, then as a globe, a force field of matter that changed from an oblong into an ellipse, glimmering and shivering, dim and shadowy, now thickening, deepening, and blackening. The vision stayed with him all his life, a mystery as to how the one be many, how thousands of creatures operated as a single entity, performing extreme stunts of swirling acrobatics, free from gravitational pull. Coleridge was at the time devising an ideal community, a utopia, which he called a pantisocracy, and which, together with his fellow poet, Robert Southey, he planned to introduce to America. Now here were starlings creating a miraculous order, just by instinct. It was an object lesson, spelled out by nature herself, as to how human beings might happily interact and cooperate. Watching starlings on Otmore two hundred years later, I saw them spelling out the same lesson. A towering organism was moving in perfect formation, with no discernible leader, no president. It whooshed through the air at forty miles an hour. Each bird reacted to another bird's movement in a hundredth of a millisecond. They tumbled and banked in synchronized spatial symmetry, collision-free. They moved like iron filings drawn by a magnetic field to create their sophisticated aerial society, a society that flies instead of creeping along, suborned by unnatural pressures and alien orders. And the flock's structure echoes the physics of magnetism, with each particle's electron spin aligning with its neighbours in a symbiotic harmony, like a metal entity becoming magnetised. It hints at the discovery of a universal principle, which seems to tap into a natural order, a physiological mechanism happening almost simultaneously in birds that are separated by hundreds of feet. Since they can mimic us with an unusual facility, it shouldn't be too hard to mimic them, to rise high on nature rather than wrecking it, to enjoy a life that no one can condemn. There are no controlling starlings exercising force, not a single bird's left behind in isolation, not one wastes time voting, They'd lose height if they did. It's anarchy in motion, a glorious revelation.